tracking the investigation into a shooting that injured one person and sent another to jail. A shocking discovery in a high school staff restroom. What an item that looked like a smoke detector was really concealing. And what a community is doing to help the family of a teen who died of meningitis. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon to you. Some of us saw a brief blast of wintry weather this morning. And while the snow is disappearing, we'll have to get through a cold night before we see much improved weather. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here to check the forecast. You got me all choked up with this warm stuff coming. You, you know what? A lot of folks are going to be doing the same, Sam, over the next couple of days. Thermometers indeed beginning to come up, but we still have a little touch of some snow across parts of southern Kentucky. Check out this cam from Interstate 75. That is near Corbin. In into northern parts of Whitley County, and indeed, you can see some snow here across the grassy areas and right on the edge of the road, the edge of the interstate. Looks like the interstate is mainly wet. Road crews been out uh, doing a little salting after that little round of snow made its way right on cure across the southern half of the area. What we're seeing now in Life First Alert Defender is still some of those flakes here right on top of the Corbin and points to the south into Williamsburg, parts of Knox County, and along the Virginia border counties. You get into the highest elevations here from Bell County into Harlan County, uh, the Whitesburg area, not far from Fleming Neon. We could be picking up a quick half inch to one inch with that last burst of snow. Now the better stuff begins to arrive from the north. A little sunshine breaking out into northern Kentucky where it is now 38 degrees into Covington, yet freezing or below for areas who are still dealing with a mostly cloudy sky. Wind chill is 23 degrees, so do bundle up if you're going to be outdoors across the Lexington Metro. When I come back, it is on what you're going to be talking about over the next few days, a small January thaw that is ahead of us. Thank you, Chris. That blast of snow caused some problems earlier today on roads in Madison County. There were at least six crashes thanks to the uh, icy conditions, the snow. A few of those happened on Interstate 75 and caused a backup that lasted for several miles. When deputies saw the forecast, they knew it'd be a busy morning for them. We don't expect as many as like we've had, especially all at the same time. Uh, but we do expect accidents, obviously. Now, the main roads cleared up by late morning. Traffic on I-75 was back to normal by about noon. An argument puts one man in the hospital and another in jail. State police say one man shot the other during a disagreement outside a building on Hager Drive in Richmond about 1 this afternoon. Police arrested the suspect following an intense search. WKYT's Victor Puente is tracking the investigation from the scene. It was an argument that led to this shooting. At least that's what Kentucky State Police say. They still haven't revealed what caused these two men to start fighting in the first place. Police were called around 1 o'clock to Hager Drive. That's just west of Richmond. Neighbors told them they heard one gunshot. It appears that some kind of argument ensued uh, here in the parking lot, and, uh, and shots were then fired. 52-year-old Brian Ditch was taken to U.K. hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police began searching for a shooter. Within a few minutes, they had arrested 63-year-old James Pearson. They say he had got a gun out of his vehicle and fired that shot. He was found across the county on Greens Crossing Road. It does not appear that, uh, that these two uh, individuals knew each other prior to the shooting. After the shooting, two dogs were recovered from Ditch's Jeep. They do dog rescue, uh, and he was out actually picking up dogs, and uh, he doesn't live here. Pearson is charged with first degree assault. Police talked to neighbors on both sides of the street. Uh, they recalled seeing the two in some kind of argument here in front of the building. And, uh, and, and their, what, what they saw and heard is, is vital uh, in our investigation. Because Ditch was rushed to the hospital, police tell me they didn't get a chance to talk to him. But they plan on driving up to the hospital to get his version of the events. They say that should give them a better idea of how this played out. In Madison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Pearson was questioned at the Richmond State Police Post and then taken to the Madison County Detention Center. Certainly not what you expect to find in a high school restroom. Someone put a hidden camera disguised as a smoke detector in a faculty restroom at Corbin High School. Now police are trying to figure out who is responsible. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is tracking the investigation from Corbin. 
Police have sent that camera off to a crime lab for testing, and there's really no word on who put it there, but the superintendent tells me that he does not believe this was a student. That's because the camera hidden in a smoke detector was found in a staff restroom that's not accessible to students. The device was found by an employee who thought it looked out of place. Police were called, and the device was sent off to the crime lab for testing. Cameras and smoke detectors are common devices. In fact, we found one on Amazon. They can be bought by those who want to check on people they suspect are up to no good. But now school officials say whoever put this one in a bathroom is clearly up to no good. I sure hope that we catch the individual that's involved with this. And it appears that it is an adult and, and that the full penalty of the law is enforced in this case. And the superintendent tells me that in his many years of being an administrator, he has never had a situation ever like this. Much more at 6, but for now, in Corbin, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. School officials say they checked other rooms and school buildings, and they think this was the only camera device put in the school. It is a way to help a family grieving a terrible loss. 15 year old Cole Hahn died of meningitis last month. He lived in Clark County, and now the community is coming together for his family. WKYT's Rebecca Smith shows us what's being done for them in a story that's new at five. Cole was a fantastic kid. Cole um, what, made everybody laugh. He was always um, the life of the party, he was always the fun one that everybody wanted to be around. The mother of a young teenage son, Joan Graves, relates to the pain Cole Hahn's family must be feeling after losing the 15 year old to meningitis. Their goals and their ambitions, and you try to hone that for them and with the full expectation that someday those dreams are going to be realized, and then suddenly they're just not. To help the family with funeral costs, Joan and others helped to organize a benefit to be held this Saturday at Justice Elementary School from 1 to 6 p.m. They're also asking for donations via Cole's GoFundMe page that they've set up. They've almost reached their goal of $10,000. To have him be so energetic and just be, have such an infectious personality and then just be gone so quick, it's devastating. In Clark County, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Well, if you would like to help, we have a link to the GoFundMe page on our website. Just go to WKYT.com. A man pled guilty in connection to the shooting death of two people a decade ago. Our county-by-county county be coverage begins in Bourbon County. 41-year-old Labrado Rosario Ramirez pled guilty to manslaughter, kidnapping, and wanton endangerment. He received a total of 10 years for those charges. With credit for time already served, he'll be in prison a little less than four years. In Madison County, police have arrested two people accused of snatching an elderly woman's purse. Mary White and Brandon Collins are charged with theft and evidence tampering for the incident outside Meyer in Richmond on Monday. Collins is also charged with hindering apprehension. Police say they recovered the purse and some of the items inside. Wildcats are back in action this weekend. They are following up an easy victory against Missouri at Rupp with a road trip south. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here now with a preview. Hi, Rob. Yes, it is right back on the road this weekend, and it is shaping up to be a difficult game. Alabama in Tuscaloosa Saturday afternoon. Now, the Cats righted their ship Tuesday night, rolling over Missouri by almost 50 points. Cal pleased the way his team came back and performed after going to overtime twice. Kentucky remains undefeated as we hit mid-January. What, what is funny are overtime wins or L's. You know, like, well, what, you win a tough game and you, you need tough games. And, and I told the guys, they know, I don't expect them. I told them right after the game, I don't expect you to play like it's March. And we're not. Offensively, we're still not. We still have guys not playing the way they need to play for us to really be special. So it is Alabama in Tuscaloosa Saturday. It will be a 4 o'clock start on ESPN2. Now, some controversy has developed over Kentucky playing UTEP, Texas El Paso. UTEP coach Tim Floyd made some comments yesterday very strong with his words. John Calipari responded this afternoon. I will have that coming up in sports a little bit before 6. Sam Amber. Rob, very interesting. Thank you. And with a 16 0 start, the Wildcats are off to the fourth best start in the history of the program. The president expands paid leave for federal workers. He wants the rest of us to have it as well. More in his proposal ahead. 
Doctors have a new option when it comes to fighting obesity. We'll show you how this new device works in better living.